Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. Today we are discussing as the title of this journal article from 2014 from Sports Medicine suggests, the effects of strength training on performance in endurance athletes. So we know that a lot of the professional athletes in triathlon, in cycling, running, swimming, all those endurance events are doing a, or in, at least integrating some form of strength training into their routines. And today we're going to talk about how strength training can benefit, benefit you as an age grouper or even an, an aspiring professional athlete. However, there are always caveats to any time you introduce something new into your training or new, you know, no, mo modality of uh, training such as strength training. So the key things, just to highlight the findings of this meta-analysis that looked at 26 different studies, was that strength training in well-trained athletes, training more than uh, six plus hours a week, improved time trial performance significantly, economy significantly, so the rate at which you are uh, expending energy for given performance, um, VO2 max significantly, muscular power, and overall race performance as well. So definitely some benefits and decent benefits to strength training. However, like anything, there is always considerations that you need to make. Now, let's have a look at a nice schematic which this study put together, discussing how strength training can facilitate your, or at least complement your endurance training. So this schematic that was compiled in the study mentioned, and I will link this study uh, in the description of the video if anyone's keen to check it out, essentially looking at the different ways in which you can optimize your VO2 max, aerobic capacity, and overall endurance performance. And endurance training, of course, the LSD, that's not the drug, this is a, a long, uh, steady state, or, or something like that, training, uh, tempo training, um, and or long, slow distance training, I believe this is, tempo training and intervals as well. Uh, this is one modality in which you can increase aerobic power and capacity, and that's obviously going to always be the key to a good uh, base for endurance performance. However, we can also do strength training, uh, and this can really looking at, you know, focusing on anaerobic power and capacity, but also neuromuscular capacity. And I think that from an endurance perspective, this neuromuscular capacity is really where we get the benefits. So morphological factors, muscu muscular tenderness, stiffness, motor unit recruitment, intra and intermuscular coordination. Really key things to be focusing on, particularly this last one, intra and intermuscular coordination. Obviously, most people can go and run, most people can ride, most people can go and swim. But if you have deficits in activation of specific muscle fibers or muscle fiber recruitment if you have um imbalances in muscular strength say between your glutes hamstrings quadriceps and you have imbalances which then predispose you to reduced economy reduced efficiency and even then injury risk then of course this is where strength training and in particular focus strength training can really really shine so looking at all factors that lead to improved endurance performance, VO2 max being one, general training and muscular memory, muscle strength, lactate threshold, economy, a big one, and then muscular power factors, incorporating muscle unit recruitment, intra intermuscular coordination. Um, and so this is where strength training can really benefit endurance athletes and even age group athletes. However, this is an important factor which highlights the I guess the fact that the insurance training itself needs to be specific and you need to be going to the gym with a specific purpose, uh, training a specific muscle group that's also relative to the performance you're willing or looking to improve. You know, going to the gym and just doing 100 bicep curls isn't necessarily going to improve your triathlon performance, but focusing on compound movements, functional movements, improving the strength of the glutes, uh, deadlifts, um, and really trying to maximize stability of the core of the hamstrings, glutes, quadriceps, etc. Even if you have, you know, instabilities in the ankle, improving ankle strength, but also balance and the equilibrium balance and dynamics, all super important. So when you think about strength training, there can be many, many benefits, particularly even for age group athletes. However, 
one key thing is the specific factor or the factor of specificity and specificity and the fact that you need to be going in there with intention and not just walking in there throw weights around gain a whole lot of muscle because at the end of the day if anything it might make you a little bit stronger it's probably going to slow you down you don't necessarily need to become a bodybuilder in the gym the purpose should always be to improve economy and efficiency and to activate neuromuscular pathways which may have gone dormant, may have gone a bit weak or lazy. And by activating them, you can become overall uh, more balanced um, and have greater symmetry through the body and not have imbalances, which could lead to injury, but also reduced economy. So that's a really important takeaway with any kind of strength training approach that we really should be focused on. Now I want to just quickly highlight or summarize the conclusion and future directions from the study itself. So we'll read through as follows. The present research available suggests the inclusion of strength training in an endurance athletes program for improved economy, muscle power, and performance. It is important that future, future researchers and coaches are aware that muscular force velocity adaptations are dependent upon the duration of the strength program, the current strength level of the athlete, and the exercise or exercises administered, including velocity and loads of the exercises. For long-term improvements in weak which would be neuromuscular inefficient or non-strength trained uh, endurance athletes. The present literature demonstrates that a general maximal strength orientated program may initially be the most appropriate and efficient method for improving maximal force, power, and reactive strength capabilities. Endurance athletes with high force capabilities may need to place a greater emphasis on explosive or specific explosive and reactive strength training to gain further improvements in performance however it is evident that future research of course is needed in this area so this is an important point obviously the strength training needs to be specific and it needs to be intentional and you should always be going with a purpose for your specific goal whether that's improving imbalances whether that's uh increasing specific strength relative to the bike relative to the run or the swim however you also need to be look, very conscious of the of your individual baseline level of strength and your uh, general capacity in this area before you undertake any program. And this will dictate where particularly you should be starting in a program. So for long-term improvements, so for less um, experienced, I guess, um, or you know, non-strength trained athletes or endurance athletes, a general maximal strength orientated program may initially be most appropriate. So this would focus on force, power, reactive strength capabilities. And I think that obviously here, you really want to be focusing on probably a higher repetition range, but, but getting the movements of the actual actions, the actual actions are uh, dialed in and specific so that you act, you're recruiting the right neuromuscular pathways. There's no point jumping into low repetition, high strength or high weight activities or, or, you know, movements when you don't have the actual neuromuscular pathways uh, engaged in order to get the best benefit from that and you're otherwise just further promoting um instability or you know unsymmetrical or you know uh, the wrong kind of uh movements and, and and pathways so very important for people or athletes age groupers with little strength training and experience to start by focusing on really dialing in the movements getting them dialed in down packed so that the actual pathways are learnt and mastered before moving on to higher weight activities because if you go too quickly into high weight activities you know you're really just kind of further propagating or uh, further consolidating poor form and you're also you know re, uh, predisposing yourself to risk injury risk um which obviously is not something that you want to be uh having happen in the gym you know you don't you go to the gym to get strong you don't go to the gym to get injured especially when the focus is for improving endurance so definitely a key takeaway there tailor the program to your individual experience and your baseline level of neuromuscular efficiency and strength.
Okay, so this leads us to the key takeaways. Strength training for endurance athletes, for age groupers, for your everyday competitor. We know the pros do it, but is it worth it? Is the return on investment regarding your time input worth it in terms of how much it's going to actually benefit your performance on race day and overall enjoyment in the sport? So I think the pros for strength training uh, or the positive outcomes that can result from strength training are improved health and body composition. This this is regarding hormonal health. We know that strength-based training can have a greater influence on the anabolic hormones, testosterone, um, and less of an effect on cortisol, like what uh, endurance training has. It really ramps up cortisol and can lower testosterone levels. So this can help improve body composition, fat-free mass, so improving muscular mass whilst reducing body fat, and overall health. You know, strength training is important for the next step, bone density, especially when you're getting older. If you're getting into your older age or you're getting into older age and you're wanting to, you know, continue doing endurance and continue running and cycling and swimming, strength training can be definitely very beneficial, particularly for bone density and the next one, decreasing injury risk. Uh, and I think that overall, as we think about the, the, the pros of strength training, becoming generally a more balanced athlete, remember that triathlon isn't often for a lot of people, it's not their job. Uh, cycling for a lot of people, it's not their job. Running, swimming for a lot of people, it's not their job. Uh, and so to merely uh, confine yourself to being good at one thing or being purely just only good at running really quick for a long distance or, or et cetera, I think that from a the mindset of being more balanced, more healthy, and an overall uh, more complete athlete as an individual, strength training can be definitely important and uh, make you a more functional, balanced athlete. The cons, or at least not the cons, but the things that you need to consider are the time return on investment. So I think that if you are putting in a specific uh strength program for a specific goal and outcome then the return on investment will be worth it in terms of the the performance metric you're looking to modulate so whether that's injury prevention and you have a design a design program relative to that it's going to be worth it if it's improved neuromuscular coordination and decreasing asymmetries uh within the body it's going to be worth it getting more motor unit recruitment uh it's going to be worth it but if you're just going to the gym um, and it's non-specific like this last point, wasteful if non-specific, you really are in a sense, you know, you may, you may still improve body composition, overall health, et cetera. However, relative to your performance, it might not have that much of a benefit. So ensuring workouts are specific will ensure that the time return on investment is worth it. And if you're only looking at it from a performance side of things and say you have, for example, in your week, your busy work week with family work, et cetera, eight hours or 10 hours to train, spending four of those hours in the gym and six doing training, endurance training may not necessarily reap the, or you may not necessarily be utilizing your time from a performance standpoint as well as possible. Maybe doing nine hours of endurance training and one hour in the gym would be more beneficial. And for some people, uh, the gym may not actually, or the strength training may not actually yield all that much endurance benefit for them relative to where they are and they might just be better off doing more endurance training so it's definitely individual specific and you need to think about the time return on investment you also need to consider the fact that if you do go too hard or you're you're pulling up sore for multiple days can is this hindering your workout capacity and is this hindering your ability to push in training and therefore again are you negatively affecting your race performance by not being able to train as much specifically for swim for bike for run whatever it is so you need to consider the fact that is it going to hinder your workout capacity and therefore you need to really kind of implement it around key sessions and be careful as to where you're doing the gym sessions so that you're not uh, predisposing yourself to poor workouts and even increasing your injury risk so overall i think that from a, a net benefit standpoint Strength-based training for endurance athletes is definitely something that is worth it and is something that could be pursued by most athletes. However, I think that there's a few things you need to consider and there's always going to be positives and always going to be negatives that need to come into the equation. 
However, if it's well balanced, if it's smart, if it's structured specific and not in excess, and if your time allows and it's not placing an additional huge stress on your life that you need to be rushing to the gym and sacrificing other things which are important to you, all those things considered, I think that it can be definitely beneficial for endurance athletes. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys do endurance training and if you, or sorry, if you're an endurance athlete and you do strength training and uh, I'd like to hear everyone's opinion. And I hope that that was an interesting discussion nonetheless uh, for you guys. So take care and I will uh, see you in the next video. Post any questions down below. Appreciate all the support. Thanks guys.